Why are these fans so excited for a goal kick, you may be asking? What exactly does it mean? Why is it such a staple when the Mexican national team plays its fixtures? And is this a tradition that should continue? Many critics have said absolutely not. Recently, Mexico took on Ecuador at Soldier Field, where the Chicago Bears play their home games. Throughout the match, this chant was not heard until later on. As Ecuador goalie Alexander Dominguez attempted a kick, enough of the announced crowd of 61,104 made the chant, forcing a stoppage in the 81st minute. Players from both teams gathered in the center circle before the match resumed after a brief delay. Last year, the Sporting News reported Mexico's soccer federation was sanctioned yet again by FIFA for the use of the homophobic slur. In a practice believed to have started among fans in the early 2000s, Mexican national team fans joined in unison to shout a Spanish-language homophobic slur, which roughly translates to gay prostitute, when an opposing goalkeeper puts the ball into play on a goal kick. The chant is supposedly meant to intimidate the keeper and the opposing team. Team. In June of last year at the CONCACAF Nations League semis, the PA announcer issued a warning to the crowd, taking in Mexico, Costa Rica, to not use the slur. Organizers hoped periodic announcements in the stadium would persuade fans to refrain from using such language. Regional and international governing bodies had stepped up efforts to eradicate it from stadiums, turning to social media campaigns and threats of ejection and game forfeiture. There was no such luck. Throughout the match, fans yelled the homophobic Spanish word when the Costa Rican goalkeeper smashed the ball upfield. CONCACAF, the regional soccer authority that runs the tournament, said security ejected several fans in the first half for using the word. Mexican Federation President Jan de Luisa told the media in 2021, It's not the intention with which you shout or with which you chant. It's how the other people receive it. If anybody feels it's a discriminatory act, then it is not something that we should include in a conversation. This is no longer a debate. If it is discriminatory, we should avoid it. The Federation unveiled a video campaign featuring current and former players and other popular figures asking fans to refrain. It also warned that resulting penalties could cost Mexico a World Cup berth. Since 2017, FIFA, soccer's international authority, has had a three-step procedure to deal with what it calls discriminatory incidents in its tournaments. Two years ago, the organization encouraged all governing bodies to follow its lead and implement the same policies. The first step is to halt the match. The second, if necessary, send the players to the locker rooms, and if all else fails, call off the game. If a World Cup home qualifier were abandoned, a team could end up forfeiting points and falling in the standings. However, at the 2018 World Cup in Russia, FIFA did not implement its three-step policy when the chant was used during Mexico's opening match. Instead, the Mexican Federation was fined $10,000, and Mexican players turned to social media to encourage better behavior. Domestically, Liga MX's president said, whoever shouts it has no place in the stadium. We have generated a protocol for people to be removed from the stadiums, but hopefully we will not have more sanctions. However, Guillermo Osorno, host of the LGBTQ podcast The Future is Ours, warned that the punitive approach of sanctions and fines is not the most appropriate in this case because, paradoxically, it incites the most virulent hatred on the part of soccer fans. It is positive that FIFA and the Federation recognize that the shout is homophobic, but when they insist on punishing it, it provokes more anger against the LGBT community. So the fault that Mexico does not go to the World Cup would end up being, and she uses that word, because we are very sensitive, it's terrible. Claudia Pedraza, who specializes in gender and feminism issues, is a member of the Barra Feminista, a female soccer fan club in Mexico that touts itself as an alternative space for fans of the game. She said the repeated use of homophobic slurs was a cultural issue that hasn't really been addressed 
by sanctions or ad campaigns trying to stop fans from screaming it. The campaigns do not use the word homophobia. They try to eradicate the cry from the perspective of respect and that this hurts the fans, that it affects the teams, Pedraza said. But they do not even mention the real problem. She said a cultural change is necessary at all levels so that the use of offensive terms are stopped in various sports venues. And this won't be achieved with sanctions or fines. These practices must be eradicated from the same coaches and managers who express themselves in this way with the players, she said. Fast forward to Mexico, Ecuador at Soldier Field in Chicago. And all that showed is this is very, very far from being over. We learn that it's going to take time said Mex Tour spokesperson Gabriel Gabor. We'll have to go back and evaluate the protocols, but we feel very strongly about the messaging and the education. The goal is to eradicate it, but we have to do it all together, not just organizers, but working together with fans, with the media, with the community. We'll get it done.